We like to think we're the only humans around, but it hasn't been that way forever. Many genus Homo versions were living at the same time millions of years ago. A lot of these human-related ancestors lived between two and three million years ago, but it still isn't clear how all of them fit into the human lineage. Some were more ape-like with small brains and covered with hair, yet they are hominids all the same. Let us take you on a prehistoric path to discover how many versions of humans there were and why there is only one type left now. Find the answers in this time immemorial video on the unusual human species that actually existed. Bigfoot can step aside. He isn't the only human-like species that has existed on planet Earth. At one point, there were at least 15 types of classified human species coexisting in the world, and some even intermingled to produce new classifications that scientists are just now discovering and identifying. Our group now living, Homo sapiens, were a later group to develop in the genus Homo species. Homo gautengensis was the first. It had big teeth and were vegetarians, but maybe not since there were burnt animal bones in their remains. Burnt bones meant they made fire and used it. Even though they had small brains, they could also make stone tools. They spent a lot of time in the trees and didn't have any speech or language skills. While it may be a Homo sapiens relative, this species is likely not a direct ancestor. Among the species living around millions of years ago were the Australopithecus and Homo habilis. A canine tooth belonging to Australopithecus is judged to be around three and a half million years old. Scientists found evidence of stone tools from around 3.3 million years ago in 2010. One interesting fact about the Australopithecus was its brain size. It began getting larger compared to previous species. No one knows why, but there are theories ranging from space aliens changing the DNA to diet affecting brain growth. Like many earlier species of humans, it has never been proven that modern humans came from Australopithecus. Homo habilis groups lived around 2.31 million years ago and are determined to be one of the direct links to modern man. They lived in South Africa and their remains were discovered in 1964. Scientists recognized this group in the 1980s as the first human ancestor. The distinguishing factors from previous species were its large brain and its use of stone tools. Large brains and stone tools are key to defining humans. The Homo habilis had the same basic structure as the Australopithecus, but was much shorter. Males were only around 3 feet 11 inches tall, with females growing to only 3 foot 3 inches. Another fascinating fact about this group is they were definitely meat eaters and lived in colonies of between 70 and 80 members. This was likely for defensive purposes. Homo erectus, or upright man, is what today's humans tend to think of as the first human ancestor. They looked similar to us, could grow up to six feet tall, and had longer legs and shorter arms. They also lived on the ground rather than in trees. While the Homo erectus developed later than some of these other types of humans, it coexisted with many of these other variations. They came to be around 1.9 million years ago, and lived until 11,000 years ago, so they outlasted many of the other types of groups in the genus Homo. There were only three types of human species left when Homo erectus met its demise, and those were Neanderthals, Homo floresiensis, and Homo sapiens. Before we talk about those three groups, let's look at some other human types coexisting in prehistoric times. The Homo ergaster was an ongoing species for 500,000 years in Africa before suddenly disappearing around 1.4 million years ago. This group had a protrusive face, a lower forehead, and thinner bones than other groups. It also had smaller teeth and mouths, but a much larger head than earlier specimens of the same species. The Homo antecessor is an interesting breed living 1.2 million years ago. This was a larger breed, up to 6 feet tall and bigger with males weighing around 200 pounds. What they had in size, they didn't have in brains, because their brain size was smaller than the average brains of today's humans. What fascinates anthropologists about this breed is they may have been right-handed, which makes them distinctive from apes. 
It's also thought they used a symbolic language, similar to humans today, and were able to reason. A discovery of a mandible in Germany in 1908 led to the identification of Homo heidelbergensis, which lived between 700,000 years ago and became extinct around 200,000 years ago. This group was around 5 foot 9 inches tall and was more intelligent than Homo erectus. They controlled fire and used it to heat food, stay warm and for lighting. They also built fireplaces and were also found living in Israel where they used natural elements like caves for shelter. This group was also the first known to hunt large animals as spears were found in Germany. Most believe the Homo heidelbergensis developed from Homo erectus and was the beginning of other species like the Neanderthals and the Denisovans. A standard theory is that human ancestors came up from Africa and wandered into Eurasia. From there, they divided with some migrating toward Europe and others moving toward Siberia. Those headed towards Europe eventually developed into the Neanderthals, while those going the opposite way developed into Denisovans. So, all of these groups are essentially related, although scientists can't explain exactly how and when this took place. Denisovan remains were discovered in 2010 in a Siberian cave and are believed to be a breed that lived during the Ice Age. They are believed to be a type of hybrid breed originating some 300 to 400,000 years ago. So, they were one of the breeds living at the same time as at least nine other breeds, including Neanderthals. The Nathanderals are probably the most well-known human breed of prehistoric times because they are a part of popular culture. They came about around 400,000 years ago and became extinct around 40,000 years ago. Surprisingly, they looked more like today's humans in that they had less body hair. Males stood around 5 foot 5 inches tall and females were around 5 foot 1. The Nathanderals had a couple of interesting features. Despite their image as dumb, again due to pop culture, Nathanderals had brains that were much bigger than ours. They were incredibly strong and did many things we consider to be human, like building shelters, making clothes, and eating both plants and animals. They even made decorations and put flowers on graves, something highly unusual for a prehistoric breed. One of the oldest breeds is the Homo floresiensis, nicknamed the Hobbit. They came from Indonesia and their remains were found in 2003 in Luang Bua Cave on the island of Flores, which is how they were named. The discovery was fantastic as scientists found nearly full skeletons. This group outlived many others and they only became extinct 17,000 years ago. They were only 3 foot 5 inches tall at most, so the nickname of Hobbit fits them. The odd fact about this breed is they only lived in Indonesia, so scientists can't figure out how they were created or why they went extinct, even though they lived at the same time as other human breeds. There are a couple of newly added breeds to the genus Homo. One is Homo naledi. This group lived in the Rising Star Cave system in South Africa. It is considered a human-ape hybrid that could have lived into the Stone Age, although that isn't proven. It is believed to have originated around 335,000 years ago. The traits of the Homo naledi were a small brain and the torso and shoulders of apes, but also carrying human features. The Homo longi was recently added as a new type of hominid. Found in China, the skull of the Homo longi is excessively large with a big brain and large teeth. The remains are believed to be around 146,000 years old. The relationship of this group to other species is unknown, but some scientists think modern humans may be more closely linked to the Homo longi than the Nathanderals. The facts are that at least nine human species were living on Earth around 300,000 years ago. Yet every species, except Homo sapiens, were gone 10,000 years ago. The simplest explanation for the mass extinction was that Homo sapiens began rising around 260,000 years ago and began competing for land and food. They spread from Africa to Asia and Europe and eventually multiplied and conquered to the point that they were pushed out of all other species. At least that's the theory. Thanks for watching.